Hi everybody, today I am four weeks to my average last frost date, so I'm gonna be starting my melons and my squash. Now if you notice, I didn't have a five weeks before my last frost video. Basically a lot of these things can be started within you know, that four or five week range, which also goes into my next point in that a lot of people do not recommend starting the squashes inside. They do better directly planted. And yes, that is the case where you have a longer growing season, but up here where we have a shorter growing season, these are warm season crops. So they do not like to go out in the cold. If by getting them started early, I can get a little bit of a jump start on the plant. The biggest reason why it's best to direct sow these is because they do not like their roots disturbed. So knowing this, I'm very careful when I transplant them. And also I plant them in these newspaper pots. Now I have a video from a couple of years ago that I'll link below to show you how to make them, but they're super easy. Basically you just take a sheet of newspaper. I like to use two sheets just to make it a little bit stronger. I usually roll it up around a wine bottle because they have a little indentation in the bottom, which you just push the bottom into, pull it off, and there's your pot. Now I like to make some really deep ones here because again, they don't want their roots disturbed. This is gonna give them lots of room to be able to grow a decent root system. And then when I plant them, I'll just dig a nice big hole and just put this right in the hole and I don't have to disturb the roots at all. And this way has gotten me a lot of success, at least for the squash. Hopefully for the melons this year, it's gonna work. Let's get to see what seeds we got here. First thing I'm gonna start here is this Minnesota Midget. This is actually one of the only melons I've successfully grown. It was very small, maybe a little bit bigger than a golf ball, but it was really sweet, so delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to grow a few more of these this year. I'm gonna put about two to three seeds per little container here because they actually don't mind growing like in mounds. So when I'm transplanting this, I'm gonna put it in a spot where if they all grow, I'm gonna be able to let them all three of them grow and there should be enough space for them there. And next I'm gonna grow this farthest north melon. I tried this last year, the vine grew really well. I had a few small fruits, but again, it was kind of tucked up in a way. So this year I'm gonna be giving a lot more space to all my melons just to really try and get the maximum amount that I can because I mean in our colder season they probably would be better off in a greenhouse and we do hope to have a high tunnel but I mean if you don't have a high tunnel I know a lot of people that still have success with it you just they do like a lot of heat make sure you're watering them properly and you can have success and one of the things with melons and same with the winter squash is they have a long days to maturity 100 plus days for a lot of them so these, like this farthest north is 65 days. These minimum soda midgets, it's 60 to 100. So, I mean, you could have a small one at 60, 100, it'll be a lot bigger. So I'm looking for these short season varieties of melons to hopefully be able to get them to grow. Oh, and this farthest north one is a green flesh. So that's more like your honeydew style. Next, we have this sweet granite melon, which is a cantaloupe style. And again, it's a very early maturing, cool season adapted. So I really looked for those varieties that were growing in the colder areas. And we'll see if we can have some success this year. With these newspaper pots, again, depending on how deep you make them, I'll show you my other ones. They're a little bit more shallow than this. It just depends on the size of your newspaper newspaper of course um, they need a little bit of a deeper pot I have tried them in those normal like 10 20 trays that I grow other things in and they kind of do get a little bit floppy I have over there is like the lasagna or like the big roaster tinfoil trays from the dollar store they work really great but any sort of like deeper sided container like something like this where they're gonna be able to get a little bit of support on the outside works the best. Okay, once again, I am forgetting to label everything and I did get more labels. So before I go on, let's go ahead and relabel label these guys. Okay, and then next we're gonna get into some watermelons. I did grow the sugar baby watermelon in the past and I did get, again, a little golf ball sized one. Didn't really have much pink flesh in the middle. I'm not growing that one this year. I have a few other ones to try. This first one is the Sweet Dakota Rose Watermelon. Again, the description, you know, big heavy fruit, but ideal for short growing seasons. If you don't know my mission by now, it's finding those varieties for our short growing seasons. Again, back to the containers. I've not actually tried this method with these big pots before. I'm a little worried maybe when it comes time to taking them out because I'm going to have big plants in here. But we'll give it a little bit of a try. When transplanting these, sometimes they do fall apart, kind of. The thing that's worked best for me is when I go to transplant them, is I try to let them dry out just a little bit so these are a little bit drier and then they won't really fall apart because if they're really wet, they just want to like fall apart. <laughs> so having them a little bit drier, I'll transplant them and then I can give them a really good water once they're in the ground. Okay, next is this sweet Siberian watermelon. Again, this says 80 days to maturity. So that's pretty good. I have about 120, 125 days of frost free growing days, they say. But we do tend to get some cooler nights in towards August. And of course, all these melons really just love the heat and they will just not grow as well when it's cooler out. And even in the summertime, you know, we get cooler nights and such. 
but we're just gonna keep trying it. I'm gonna give it a nice warm spot and hope to get a nice warm season. And the other thing is I am putting these right by my water source. So I'm gonna be able to water them frequently because melons like a lot of water. And you know, sometimes I'm lacking on watering the garden because not everything needs it, but I'll be more aware and really a lot more thoughtful to get these things watered on a regular basis. And lastly is this Crimson Sweet Watermelon. Again, 71 to 80 days to maturity. We'll try that one. These are not seeds that I'm gonna to want to multi-sow and then separate and replant. Basically, I'm just gonna want two or three, maybe we'll see per little thing. And then I will just cut off the extras because I think five or six is gonna to be too much. You really just don't want them competing too much. A little bit of healthy competition is good, but not so much that they struggle. Funny, they all have sweet in it. Crimson Sweet, Sweet Siberian, and Sweet Dakota Rose. So hopefully we'll get some sweet watermelon this summer. And lastly is this Kajari Melon. Tried this last year. I didn't really got anything off of it. Again, it was tucked in the corner. I'll give it a bit more space this year. If it doesn't grow, then I don't think I'll try it again. Of course, you see this one on the YouTube channels, but a lot of those people live in the South where you can grow melons pretty easily. It is a smaller snack kind of style melon. So that usually means maybe it'll mature a little bit earlier. We'll just try it. That was the last of my seeds. Hopefully we'll get some. And then I'm going to do a little experiment and I'm going to start some zucchini, some summer squash. These things grow like crazy. I've always just direct seeded them, direct sown them in the ground and they do really well. And I'm still going to do that but I'm really trying to push it early this year. I'm really dying for some nice, fresh, I love yellow zucchini. So I'm gonna see how early I can start it. And again, I'm gonna be putting this stuff up in my kitchen garden. So it's just gonna be for eating and then I can plant more zucchini down below later for preserving. We do like to make, uh, make like an homage zucchini relish, which is really good. And um, then just like pickled zucchini, all that kind of stuff is really nice. So I'm gonna start two of these guys with yellow zucchini and then I'm just gonna do one with the green zucchini because we like the green zucchini too. It's got a, a good flavor and it's just, you know, adding that variety. We all like all the different varieties. Let's get these out of the way. We got this little guy. I got one little bonus melon here to start. These are my cucamelons. Now, I mean, if you remember from my cucumber video, I didn't have the seeds and I wanted to start them. So I got the seeds and now we're gonna start them. I guess it's fitting. They can be started with our melons. These guys are just the tiniest little seeds. I'm probably gonna put about, you know, four or so in each and I'm gonna spread them out around. And then again, I'm just gonna plant them all because they will spread out and vine up and this way I've had a lot of success to get that really nice full wall kind of of cucumelons. I'm going to try to save a few of these cucumelon seeds this year of my own because again then that way they can be nicely adapted you know the really successful ones I'll save those seeds and then hopefully over time they'll just keep growing better and better here in the climate. Again with these cucumelons they take a long time to get going and get growing and I'll put them outside and you'll think they're not growing at all and then all of a sudden they'll take off. So these are the trays that I love for these newspaper pots. I can fit 15 in here. You just kind of squish them in really nice and then they sit here nice. When watering them, you can top water, but I have also have success with bottom watering these. They'll just kind of soak up and you'll see it. You'll see the wetness kind of rise up. With these, you definitely don't want to overwater. You want to make sure you let them kind of dry out a little bit between waterings so they don't get too broken down or I've never had any problems really much with mold, but that could be a problem if they stay wet too long. So for our winter squashes, first thing we're going to start with is this Howden pumpkin. These are from 2021, the seeds, but I think should do fine. I grew from these pack last year and they did pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and start them again. One thing I like to do, and I don't know if it's necessary, but when I put my seed in, I like to put it in so it's kind of sideways. And I just put it in, you can put it in like a little coin when I push that down. And that to me just is just setting it up to be able to root really nicely. I don't know if it's necessary, just my little thing that I do because the seeds only have a certain amount of energy in order to be able to sprout. So that's why if you plant them too deep, they can't get through to the surface. But of course they also have that sixth sense where they know which way is up, which way is down and which way they need to grow. And I will be planting some of these as well directly out in the garden. I just wanna get a head start on some of them. And some of them that I don't wanna plant a whole bunch of rows of, I just want a few little mounds of them, just a few plants. And these ones are going to be the ones that'll grow. Next, we have this butternut squash. This one didn't do super well for me last year, but they are really tasty. 
So we're gonna grow that one again this year. So yes, like when I'm pushing these in, I'm kind of pushing them in so they're sideways like that. Again, you don't have to. Maybe it's just one of those little superstitions. Okay, and then here we have a butter bush. And there's all different styles of the winter squash. It's just nice again to have that variety. And they do have those subtly different flavors. I haven't done it before, but a lot of people recommend using these, you know, butternuts and butter cups and stuff in order to make a, a pumpkin pie, just to have that little bit of a different flavor in their pies. A lot of them do taste pretty much like pumpkin to me, so I guess that makes sense. And then we have a butter cup. <laughs> This one is different than the butternut and the butter bush. It is really good. Grew it last year. It did pretty good. They don't last as long just because how the bottom is. It's kind of a little bit exposed. So they didn't last as long. And actually, I only have one seed left. So we're going to put this little guy right here. And hopefully it grows because I really did like actually those butter cups. That was me last year thinking, oh, I'm going to save one seed so I can grow it next year. Maybe... Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe I should do that and that will prevent me from growing too much. Okay, and then next is this sunshine squash. Hard time pronouncing that. They were really good. It's actually pretty sweet. Grew really well for me last year again and just another sort of variety. They lasted pretty long. I didn't get a whole ton off of each one. I think I only got three or four last year. I can't remember, but we got a few seeds left. We will grow that one again. And then lastly, we'll grow some acorn squash. These ones have never done super well for me either. But again, we're just going to keep trying because the variety is nice. These seeds are pretty old. I'll just start them all. And if they don't really grow, I probably won't buy any more seeds. They're pretty cute. They do look kind of like big acorns, which again, is just nice to have those different varieties for shapes. All of the things matter. Actually, the best they grew for me was two years ago when I did my three sisters garden and I put them amongst there and they kind of went up onto the fence a little bit and they did pretty good so they might be one of the ones if you want a trellis you could probably trellis those ones okay one tray down one to go okay and then next is this moonshine spaghetti squash through these last year love them so good very prolific got a lot of squash off of each vine and they lasted pretty long into the winter i mean i think we ate our last one maybe like a month or so ago and it was still really good and that's actually the last of those seeds so i'm going to have to probably try and save some this year with the squash they do really easily cross pollinate so if you want to save seeds you either put it far away from them or you can go ahead and cover it like you do with the tomato blossoms but with the squash is that they have separate male female flowers so you'll have to pollinate it yourself. You'll have to grab a male flower, uncover the female one, pollinate it, cover it back up until you see that fruit start to form. And then you know it's going to be pollinated from that plant, not cross-pollinated. And you can save the seeds from that. And you'll know you're going to be growing another squash of that same variety. Sounds like a lot of work, but it's not too bad. It's worth it if you really want to make sure you're getting that same variety. Okay, and then we have this Blanco pumpkin, which is a white pumpkin. This grew really well for me last year too. We got a lot of the white pumpkins more than any other of the pumpkins that we got. I'm gonna use up the rest of these seeds as well. And then we'll hopefully try to maybe just do a, it's gonna be a big seed saving summer, I think. Of course, you can always go ahead and buy more. A lot of these, like this is just a little seed company right near me in Edmonton. And it's nice to support them. So same with the Moonshine Spaghetti Squash. It's local out of Saskatchewan. So we don't have to save everything. Maybe I will just buy some more next year. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. Is just trying to do it all. I'm trying to rein it in. Realizing okay, maybe I can't save all the seeds. This year I'm just going to focus on maybe one or two varieties of my favorites that I grow. Of like salt. One or two varieties of squash. One or two varieties of tomatoes that I just really want to grow. And then I'll save those ones to try to get them kind of adapted to here. So let's be realistic. I know I'm not done seed shopping this year and I'll be seed shopping next year as well. Okay, so these are the sugar pie pumpkins. These are just nice little sweet pumpkins that are great for pies. So of course we need to grow those. Oh my God. Look at me, I'm doing this again. I forget to label and then I plant in that thing. Thankfully, I had not pushed anything down yet. We'll label this Blanco pumpkin and then we can get on to the next one. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna label this one first. Maybe that's where I'm going wrong. If I label it first, then I cannot forget. Sugar pie pumpkin is going in this row. There we go. And of course, being a smaller pumpkin, they generally grow and mature a little bit faster. 
than some of the other ones. And we can have these turn orange on the vine because that's kind of a struggle is just getting them to turn orange on the vine. Of course, you pick a green pumpkin and it will turn orange over time, which I do want because I'm having to pick my pumpkin sometimes in September because you have to pick them before the frost. So I definitely want to still pick some nice big green pumpkins. So that's why I'll be planting a whole bunch more pumpkins directly in the ground after our last frost date. These are just gonna be our nice early ones so that we can get an earlier harvest. Okay, lastly, I'm gonna be planting this Lady Godiva Hollis pumpkin. This one's new to me, but it has Hollis seeds. So with pumpkins, you know, it has like a pumpkin seed. It has the white outer kind of hard shell and then the inner green bit. This one doesn't have that out harder white shell. Um, it just has, and actually you can kind of see it's neat. You can see it's just plain old green seed there and the plan is with these ones is because pumpkin seeds are very healthy for you and you know you're wanting to eat them raw but it's really how hard is it going to be to try to like get all those white shells off the outside of the other pumpkins so with these ones it's just going to be really easy so we're going to go ahead and try to grow a whole bunch of these i have two rows left here i'm going to put these in and hopefully we can get a good harvest there's quite a few seeds in here so i'll have some for next year to try again we'll see how it all works Make sure we get, I'm gonna put three in each so we can just get lots of them. Look at me not labeling before, that's gonna be a hard habit to get into, but doesn't mean I can't try. There we have our melons and squash started for the year. I cannot put these in until after our average last frost date. Maybe even later I'm gonna be watching the weather because they do not like a frost. Of course, sometimes we get a frost two weeks after our average last frost date. It has happened to me, it happened last year. If these guys are big enough, then they are well past it. If they're too small, then they get damaged pretty good. So that's why I like to put in these. And not only am I gonna be planting seeds in the garden really soon, I have already started hardening off some of those seeds that have grown into seedlings that we planted at 13 weeks, 12 weeks, 11 weeks before. And I can't believe we're already here pretty much in the throes of the gardening season, which is such an exciting time to follow along and see all of this stuff turn into that crazy jungle that we get every year. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.